Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on literal equations and dimensional analysis. Our directions for this first example are to solve the equation for the variable indicated. Our study tip, solving for a specific variable. When an equation has more than one variable, like this one here, 5b plus 12c equals 9, it can be helpful to highlight the variable for which you are solving on your paper. And so if we rewrite our equation here, 5b plus the 12c equals 9. We want to solve this for b. Now I don't have a highlighter tool here, but I'll circle the b, and that's what we're trying to solve for. That means we need to move the 12c from the left side to the right side, and then eventually this 5 from the left side over to the right side. So let's start with the 12c. Let's subtract the 12c from the left side and from the right side. We're left with 5b equals 9 minus 12c. And again, we're still trying to solve for this b. And to get the b alone now, divide both sides by 5. b is going to equal the 9 minus 12c all divided by 5. And that is solving the equation for b. In example 2, we have 7x minus 2z equals 4 minus xy. And we're solving this for x, so those x's are here and there. Well, our goal needs to be to get the x's on one side of the equation. And let's pick the left side of the equation to get those two. Well, the first thing I want to do then is to move this 2z to the right side by adding 2z to both sides. And so I now have 7x equals 4 minus xy plus 2z. And right now my x's are still there and here. And I need to move this minus xy over to the left side. I can't just move the x right now since the y is still attached. So right now I need to add xy to both sides. And so I have 7x plus the xy, and that equals the 4 plus 2z. Now, I can use the distributive property to isolate this x. What I'm going to do, since both these terms have an x, I'm going to pull the x out from both, which leaves me with the 7 plus y, and then equals 4 plus 2z. Now, the reason we say this is using the distributive property, if you were actually to distribute this statement, x times 7 is the 7x, and x times y is the plus xy. And so we're using the distributive property to kind of undo in a way by pulling out the x. Now, why does this help us? Well, this is multiplication here, and the opposite of x times the 7 plus y is using division. And if I divide the 7 plus y from both sides of my equation, this one now cancels out, and I'm left with x equals the 4 plus 2z all over 7 plus y. And that is solving the equation for x when you have x on both sides to start. In example 3, let's start with the definition. An equation that involves several variables is called a formula or literal 
equation. In order to solve literal equations, we're going to use the same process that we just used in the first two examples to solve for a specific variable. So fuel economy. A car's fuel economy, E, which stands for miles per gallon, is given by the formula E equals M divided by G, where M is the number of miles given and G is the number of gallons of fuel used. Part A, solve the formula for M. Let's start with that part. If we have E equals M divided by G, in order to solve this formula for M, we need to multiply by that G on both sides of the equation. And so we're left with E times G equals our M. Could you also write it M equals E times G? Sure. What about part B? If Quanah's car has an average fuel consumption of 30 miles per gallon and she uses 9 and 5 tenths or 9 and a half gallons, how far did she drive? Well, we've already uh, set up this equation for M, and that's what we're solving for. So if we use M equals E times G, we can say, okay, M is going to equal our miles per gallon was 30, and that's what's going in for E. We used 9 and 5 tenths gallons, so 30 times the 9 and 5 tenths. And so our miles is going to equal 285 miles. Before we get to our last example, let's define the process of carrying units throughout a computation. This has two words. Well, four words, I guess. The first being dimensional analysis. And sometimes you'll also hear this called unit analysis. So dimensional analysis or unit analysis is the process of carrying units throughout a computation. And so now with chimpanzees, the average weight of the chimpanzee at a zoo is 52 kilograms. If one gram is approximately equal to 353 ten thousandths of an ounce, Use dimensional analysis to find the average weight of the chimpanzees in pounds. And your hint, one pound is equal to 16 ounces. Now, I like to set up my dimensional analysis problems using this long bar. And the way this ends up working is I'll put what I know, 52 kilograms, to start on top here. Now, we need to convert our kilograms first to grams. And so what I'm going to do is I know that there are 1,000 grams in a kilogram. So I'm going to say that there are 1,000 grams for every kilogram. And notice how kilograms were on top here. So I'm going to cancel the kilograms out by putting the next kilograms on the bottom so that these units can cancel out. Just like 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 5 divided by 5 is 1, and x divided by x is 1, kilograms divided by kilograms is, well, 1. So moving on, we know that 1 gram is approximately equal to 353 ten thousandths of an ounce. Well, if my grams is on top now, it needs to go on the bottom of my next step. So one gram is approximately equal to, and I'll write this next one on top, 0 0.0353 ounces. And for ounces, I'll write OZ. 
and now my grams have canceled out and I have my ounces left. Well, now I need to get this in pounds and we're told one pound is 16 ounces. Well, then I'll write my 16 ounces on the bottom here of my last step so that these ounces can cancel out. But also now, one pound is equal to those 16 ounces. And my ounces have now canceled out. Now that I have this set up where I've started with my original and then I've plugged in my facts, these are just our facts. 1,000 grams is one kilogram, 353 ten thousand ounces is one gram, and one pound is 16 ounces. It's just a matter of lining them up the correct way. I'm going to multiply these numbers on top. Fifty-two times one thousand times three hundred fifty-three ten thousandths is one thousand eight hundred thirty-five and six tenths, and our units are pounds over well, one times one times sixteen is sixteen. So I still need to divide by 16 before getting my final answer of 114 and 7 tenths pounds. And that's my solution, 114 and 7 tenths pounds. And that is it for this lesson on literal equations and dimensional analysis. Good luck.